I'm sad today. Welcome back to my channel. I am Brit, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you probably should because I talk about geeky things. And today, we're gonna be doing another uh, Beast Morphers episode review. This is Beast Morphers season two, episode 19, Fossil Frenzy. And so let's just jump right into it. If you guys want to skip the full episode recap, you can do so by clicking this timestamp right here or checking the chapters down below. Uh, but other than that, let's just jump right into this. The episode opens with the rangers at the Riptide Gym, and they are uh, doing some working out with uh, wooden swords on some platforms, obviously doing some balance training, as well as some sword play training. Zoe's brother comes into the gym and shows her this fossil of this possible newly discovered dinosaur, though they use the term pterodactyl and that's not actually a dinosaur. We're leaving it alone because obviously in Power Ranger lore it is. Let's look at the very first season where even two mammals were considered dinosaurs, so. Anyway, glad to know we all know what dinosaurs are and aren't, right? He is trying to get a scholarship and is hopeful to be able to do that, but needs to prove that this is a newly discovered dinosaur. Uh, so in order to do that, he needs to do a DNA test and asks if anybody at Grid Battle Force would be able to do it. She immediately offers up Nate's uh, brain to do that and says, I betcha, I've got a friend in the lab. I betcha I can get him to help. So she takes the fossil. She and Nate go back to the lab, uh, which we don't really see. We just see them later at the lab. <sighs> Meanwhile, Ben and Betty have lost their dog that apparently just keeps stealing food. <sighs> Funny. So we jump to Evox's lair where Evox is uh, absorbing some more Morphex and has now reached his full strength, his full potential. Um, and he uh, is kind of upset with Scrozzle and Roxy because Blaze is a, obviously the best because uh, he did so well in the last episode against the Rangers after stealing some more facts. So there you go. Evox still doesn't know. So Roxy takes it upon herself to try and figure out a way to prove herself to Evox. Um, and we learn how in a little while. So now we are with Zoe and Nate at the lab and uh, Zoe is getting a little impatient. She wants Nate to help her, but Nate is also doing like, you know, Power Ranger things, his duties as a member of the lab and like tuning up her beast bot. At least one beast bot got shown in this episode. Uh, so Zoe says, well, I'll go ahead and clean it while we wait. And uh, so Nate tells her which bottle the cleaning solution is. So she grabs one. Uh, he says that it is an orange bottle. So she grabs an orange bottle and we, as the audience can see that it is acid, not cleaning solution. And so she pours that into a container, which then melts the container, but not the table. We'll get to it. Um, and then it starts to spread or move essentially <laughs> to get to the fossil. Nate eventually realizes, oh, that's acid, not the cleaning solution. This is the cleaning solution. And then Zoe dives to get the fossil. Nate stops her and the fossil is destroyed by the acid, completely and utterly gone. Nate offers to go and help her tell her brother what happened, that basically she destroyed every chance he has for this scholarship. Uh, but Zoe decides to go do that alone. She decides to go and tell him. So she does. She sits down and she tells him he takes it really well for somebody who is really depending on that scholarship. Um, but it was interesting that they didn't have him completely freak out at her but we'll get to the acting in a minute. Roxy finds a newspaper that indicates that Zoe's brother has found this new dinosaur or theoretically a new dinosaur. Again, if it's pterodactyl, it's not a dinosaur, but it's 
fine. But she realizes that that is exactly the DNA that she needs to prove herself to Evox. She decides to follow the Yellow Ranger into finding this fossil because Zoe has decided that she is going to climb this mountain that her brother climbed and injured himself climbing uh, to find another fossil for him. Uh, and so she does and Roxy follows. Zoe is able to climb a ridiculously high summit with no actual safety gear aside from a helmet, uh, a biking helmet it seems, and then a backpack on her back which of course would throw off your center of gravity but that's fine. Uh, and there is absolutely no like safety harness, there is absolutely no kind of pulley system, nothing to help her climb this really high peak. And then she gets up there and isn't even winded. We'll get to it, but let's just take this into account right now uh, to find the fossil. And she was able to do it all before anybody figured out what she was doing. So. Roxy then attacks Zoe before she can take one of the fossils. Zoe's uh, comm had actually been destroyed while they were on, while she was climbing up the mountain. So she couldn't call anybody, she couldn't morph. At this point, the others realized what was going on. She went to go up the mountain, so they took her Zord and flew up there. Um, you know, not using your powers for personal gain. He following Zordon's rules, love it. However, <laughs> Wouldn't that have been easier? Anyway, so they take her Zord to go and save her, essentially, uh, only to find out that she's being attacked by Roxy. So they all kind of get out and go to fight Roxy as well. Roxy's able to take the DNA and escape with the scanner uh, to boost her powers even more. Back at Evox's lair, uh, Roxy performs the upgrade and becomes this just massive looking uh, morphed monster and then the machine breaks and we learn that now these incarnations of Robo Blaze and Robo Roxy will be the final ones because they can't be regenerated without that machine. So this is it. If they are destroyed, we're done with them because we're almost done with the series anyway, so. Blaze and Roxy leave to go and fight the Rangers. Before the Rangers left the peak, uh, Zoe did take one of the talons of the fossil, or a fossilized talon again, and she gives it back to her brother with the DNA samples, indicating that it is indeed a new species of dinosaur. She can't stay though because she hears her comm go off and the Rangers meet up with Blaze and Roxy, who are ready for a fight. So they morph into their new evolved versions of themselves and they fight the rangers. Devin is fighting Blaze, Roxy is fighting the other four rangers. Um, and then Roxy decides to make herself big. Uh, so we all know what that means. She's gonna be destroyed at the end of this episode. <laughs> so the rangers, all, so the four rangers get into their zords while Blaze and Devin are still fighting. Um, the other four rangers fight Roxy, the giant Roxy, and destroy Roxy. So of course we also uh, get to learn, or the rangers also get to learn the same thing that we got to learn earlier in the episode, which is that Robo Roxy is basically gone. There is no chance of bringing her back. So we're done with Robo Roxy. All we have left is Robo Blaze. <laughs> we meet back up with the rangers of the Riptide Gym where, uh, Zoe's brother comes in to tell her that he in fact got the scholarship and they were all very happy and celebrating. Devin goes to get a hot dog, Ben and Betty walk in with their dog again, crated, the dog escapes the crate, steals the hot dog. For some bizarre reason, I don't know if they're trying to portray it being fast or if time froze. The dog was able to freeze time, but for some reason Devin goes, and freeze frames as the dog comes up and takes the hot dog and then he's like hey where's my hot dog i don't know if they were trying to portray that as the dog was like lightning fast or if time literally stopped for devon it was poorly portrayed <laughs> a lot of things in this episode were poorly portrayed but we'll get there um and then the dog is found inside the crate with the hot dog in paw. 
as he is squirting ketchup on it and then pour, squirts it at Ben and Betty because funny. So you guys have it. That is my full episode recap of this particular episode. Now, how did I feel about it? Um, I'll be honest, this one wasn't good. This one just was not good. Didn't like it, didn't love it. Um, <sighs> wish it didn't exist. Aside from Roxy's story, I think Roxy's story was really cool. Um, I liked how they ended her story uh, for Robo Roxy. I think that that was really kind of interesting. It does bum me out that we don't get to learn more about the whole like Roxy trying to figure out what Blaze did and then maybe her telling Evox what Blaze did. Obviously that is shot out of the water, but um, I don't know, like it just, it was a good ending to her story with her, you know, always wanting to be a one-up on Blaze and having that be the reason she was essentially destroyed, which I really do appreciate. I just thought was really well done um, as far as that was concerned, but that's pretty much it. That's where the good ends and the bad begins. So let's talk about realism for a hot second. Realism is something that is important even in Power Rangers, um, even though we're talking about a series in which uh, you can breathe air on the moon. Um, so I get that you live in the universe that's created for you, but there are levels of realism that do throw you out because it just doesn't work that way. Um, even in the universe that has been created, it just doesn't work that way. Like anthropomorphic dogs that can pour ketchup on a hot dog. It's just not okay. So the acid. Somehow this particular created form of acid only destroys things on tables. It doesn't just destroy tables. And it cleans up by itself very well because it just disappears. After it destroys everything on the table, it just goes away. Oh my god. Ah! I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, the mountain climbing situation. It just wasn't well portrayed. It just wasn't well portrayed. She had a bike helmet on and a backpack and she's like <laughs> up a peak that would have taken her days. I'm sorry, like I used to do some rock climbing, not, not obviously mountain climbing because we don't have mountains in Minnesota and the closest thing we have to mountains is Little House on the Prairie. But <laughs> actually we do have bluffs down south, but uh, no, it's my parents and I love to make fun of Little House on the Prairie because it's supposedly set in Minnesota, but there are mountains everywhere and there are no mountains in Minnesota. There are bluffs down south, like in Winona. That's it. That's as much as you get of mountains in this state. Anyway, so I've never done mountain climbing, obviously, but I have done some forms of rock climbing. And as somebody who has dabbled in it, never done it too seriously, uh, but somebody who has dabbled in it, I was even frustrated. So I can't even imagine somebody who actually does rock climbing or mountain climbing, can't even imagine how they must feel about it. Just saying. And then the dog, like it was one thing with the dog jumping up into the booth and just starting to eat off of a plate. That is a very dog thing to do. My dog has done it. My dog does not do it anymore because I was trained out of him, but dogs do that. So that was fine. But the end, I'm sorry. That's just, that was too cartoony and not in, and not in a way that fits into Power Rangers because Power Rangers has a cartoony element, which is good, but not in that regard. We've never had that happen before with a real animal in Power Rangers. And it's just, it threw me out. It, it wasn't funny. It wasn't, it was dumb. It, it just, Chad, control your team better. I know this is your final season. I know you're done. You're done. You are done. But still, like seriously, come on. Really? Really? Fine. <sighs> okay, let's talk about something that I'm actually somewhat an expert in because I've done it. I've been doing it since before Power Rangers, actually probably about the same time Power Rangers, I don't know, probably before Power Rangers. I don't remember, I'd have to look at my resume. I have the actual date, because I did actually ask my dad, because my the first commercial I did, the first voiceover commercial I did was for my father, so. Um, I actually asked him, so it's on my resume, and it is correct on my resume, but I can never remember off the top of my head. Anyway, let's talk about the acting. Um, so, there is a moment where Zoe is talking with Ravi, and I've talked about 
Robbie's actor multiple times. I have talked about him uh, being kind of the weakest of the Rangers as far as acting is concerned, and this is very still, still, still very much true. Um, however, I think this is also kind of more of a writing issue as well as a directing issue, um, but it's also an acting issue. And it's literally one line. And it's when he goes, oh man. Here's the thing. So when you're writing dialogue, it needs to be conversational. Oh man is not conversational. It is not something that people naturally say. Um, so it's really hard for people to naturally make it sound not awkward. So, oh man, or oh man, no matter how you say it, it doesn't come off naturally. So what needed to happen in that moment was when he says it and he can't do it naturally because it did not sound natural. It definitely sounded forced. It definitely sounded really bad. Um, what needed to happen is the director needed to step in with the writer and say, we need to do something, you know, something more, a little bit closer to your lexicon. So for example, like me, I say oofta. That is not natural lexicon throughout the entire United States or any English speaking country. It is a Norwegian saying, and it is said primarily in Minnesota by Norwegian Americans as I am myself. So that being said, um, we would have needed to take something that was like UFTA or had the same connotation as UFTA to allow me to have something that would be more natural in a North American context, uh, North American lexicon. So, oof, would be good. Or oof, just drop off the da at the end of UFTA. You know, oof. Or ah, or woo, or ugh, or yikes! Even I do say yikes every once in a while. So we, you needed to jump in there as a director and figure something out that sounds a little bit more natural. But clearly, these directors are just as green as the actors, so they don't know what the hell they're doing, which drives me bonkers. Clearly, because like our new showrunner is one of the directors, so. I'm losing hope, Simon Bennett. I don't think he directed this one, but I'd have to look. The next one is the mountain climbing, and this is an issue that Power Rangers has had constantly. Through its entire existence, Power Rangers has had an issue with mountain climbing acting. Um, so here's the thing. So this is pretty decent as far, well, I suppose a little bit further back. Yeah, this is probably more decent. So this is essentially the, uh, framing that you would have for mountain climbing. This right here would be roughly the framing that you would have. So real mountain climbing, if you're not pulling yourself up, you're pretty extended. So the issue with this is that the action isn't all in frame. So you're not having full action in frame. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna actually have you holding a lot closer to your face so that full action is in frame. The issue with that, however, is that then you see the bend in the elbow, which makes it already less uh, realistic as far as hanging. Because people don't just hang like this. They're, this could be mid pull up, but it, it isn't going to be hanging. Like I said, this is a constant issue we have in Power Rangers Lost Galaxy with Mike, even uh, later on in Lost Galaxy. Uh, spoilers abound if I talk about that particular mount or cliff hanging situation. There was one in Lightspeed Rescue. There's a lot of situations in Power Rangers history where there is mountain hanging and it just does not look realistic. They're moving their hands in ways they couldn't do because they would lose grip and they would fall. Like realistically they would actually fall. Um, so it just, it, it, it has always been an issue in Power Rangers and this is, so this is not the first time. It's just, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to call it out when it happens because it's not it's annoying. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, so it does take a lot. It is definitely a cinematography issue more than it is an acting issue. It also doesn't help the fact that these green actors don't know how to properly do mountain climbing acting anyway. Because you have to be winded, you have to be exhausted, you have to be toughed out. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. So it's, I don't know, it bothered me. I noticed it, I'm calling it out. And then Zoe's melodrama, <laughs> okay. So this is something that I've noticed for a long time in Beast Morphers, and that is the actress who plays Zoe has one level 
of upset. And that is really whispery, really drawn out words. Very stage presence like melodrama and all is lost and she's just like on the verge of tears and just very depressed and this is all we get. When in her situation in this particular thing, now as the director, so as a director in general, you don't tell an actor how to portray. Um, you allow the actor to portray how they feel necessary. You just provide the information. So essentially, if I were the director, I would have called that one out. I would have been like, hey, let's talk for a second about this. So, um, you know, so let's say I'm actually the director. Okay, so here's the thing. I like the disappointment. I like the sad. That's great. Um, however, I want a little bit more than that. So there's going to be a lot of emotions here. So on stage, it's okay to have one major emotion and not be playing with too many emotions at one time because of the way that stage acting works. Um, but you're on you're on camera now, so you have to have more intricate sounding, intricate, intricate, deeper. We're just gonna go with that. <laughs> deeper emotions as far as uh, emotions are concerned. You have to have deeper emotions there. So you have to have multiple emotions at the same time. So right now you just destroyed your brother's only chance at this scholarship. So yeah, you're gonna be upset about it. You're gonna be sad. You're gonna be really disappointed in yourself. But you also are gonna be super frustrated. Like how could this have happened, right? You're going to be really angry with yourself. How on earth could this have happened? How on earth could this have happened? So that's what I want from you. I want the sad, but I also want some anger in there as well. So, cause you can't just have one level of sad when you're on screen, um, unless it calls for that. Like, you know, you get jilted at the altar. Yeah, you're gonna, but there's also a level of anger. So yeah, so there's never just one emotion. <laughs> on screen. There's never going to be just one emotion. There's always going to be a level of anger. There's always going to be a level of sadness because you're disappointing yourself, but that also makes you angry. So if I were the actor, this is how I would have portrayed it. Obviously without the script in front of me, uh, because I don't have the script and I watched this episode one. So just bear with me, right? Okay. So there was this accident at the lab and, um, I kind of destroyed your fossil. That, it's that simple. There is a level of the same melodrama that she had, but also this like, just, I can't believe this happened kind of anger that is kind of two-toning the, the emotion. But for her, it's just like, I did this thing and I'm really gonna be just soft-spoken and really sad and depressed and it just it doesn't work for me as a director as an actor that wouldn't that wouldn't fly in one of my shows Thank you. Ugh. so that is all i've got for you guys today if uh you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs up anyway let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this episode uh also in the comments type how much you're going to miss kirby morrow uh down in the comments below maybe if you have, if your guys are anime fans or Stargate fans, let me know your favorite character that he has ever played down in the comments below. He has nothing to do with Power Rangers ex except for doing a voice of a Ninja Turtle in one episode of In Space. So, he is tied to Power Rangers, believe it or not. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let me know your favorite character that Kermit has ever played down in the comments below. And uh, that's it, man. I'm just sad. If you guys want to see the last Beast Morphers review I did, you guys can click right here. If you guys want to see all of the Beast Morphers videos I've ever done, you guys can click right here. It covers all of season one, most, or no, I'm sorry, most of season one, all of season two so far. If you guys want to subscribe, go ahead and click right here and uh, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Otherwise, I will see you on Thursday for one of my Thursday videos where my background isn't gonna look like this because obviously like I filmed all of my Thursday videos already. So just bear in mind, this is not going to be what this looks like, but at least for a while, uh, Maroku will be hanging out in back of us, which by the way, is my favorite character Kirby Morrow has ever played. I'll see you guys all next time, bye.